believe it's spring already. Hey guys, it's Jess. What's up? Happy spring. No, it's not fully spring feeling outside in New York City yet. We've had a couple days that have been really special and very springy. The equinox has happened, so for today's video, I thought we'd do some spring outfits. Beyond styling inspo and outfit ideas, I also wanted the voiceover part to be kind of a continuation on the dialogue from my last video where I was talking about different ways that I style and look for inspiration within things beyond just the items themselves or the clothes, but rather how they're put together, color combinations, patterns, textures, and how all of that play together. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I will link my last video up here. As always, links to everything will be down in the description box. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and let's jump in. To me, nothing says spring like a good maxi dress, except probably florals. Florals for spring groundbreaking. Which surprisingly, I have none of in this video. And though you can definitely wear a maxi dress on its own, I've been enjoying experimenting with layering, especially because the spring weather is still quite elusive. So way one I've been styling maxi dresses are with a button up. I think this tones down the inherent dressier nature that a dress often carries. It still has that elevated feel, but it doesn't feel dressed up. I just love the more casual feel that this gives the outfit. The dress has voluminous poof sleeves, which are typically the focal point of the look, but with the button down, the cohesiveness of the whole outfit becomes more focal versus one specific feature. For shoes, I went with the cutest yellow low woven heels that play nicely as a complementary shade to the green. And because there's a lot of volume going on as the outfit travels down, I wanted to keep my bag on the more petite side, which again aids to that whole outfit cohesiveness versus being a standout piece. I also love the crescent shape of the bag with the outfit. We've already got lines on the top and the dress has a bell silhouette and the shoes are kind of this rounded square, so the unique shape of the crescent bag tucked just under the shoulder works perfectly. I also love juxtaposing the vibe. I threw this thrifted leather jacket over top to contrast, and then I went with a pair of black Mary Janes. I thought this outfit needed some sort of springification and a pop of color, so I reached for my red and white gingham crossbody bag that I made last fall. This was the first thing that I had ever self-drafted, so it's definitely got some unique qualities to it, but I love her nonetheless. And to me, this feels like a very Pinterest-esque kind of outfit. I think it's the leather jacket paired with the gingham. Those two, especially together, very Pinterest. I think a sweater layered over top is really cute as well. This is the perfect kind of outfit for those sandwich kind of days. You know, crispy morning, warm afternoon, crispy evening. And then you can add and subtract layers as you need. So I styled a green and white gingham maxi dress with a sweater that's somewhere in between cobalt and dodger blue. I love blue and green together in the spring. It just feels so one-to-one. -one. Blue skies, green grass, the vibes are vibing. For my bag and shoes, I went with brown as my neutral to pull it all together. I also played with bag shape until I landed on this rectangular coach bag. I think the structure plays nicely with the volume of the rest of the outfit. If you guys have caught my last two videos, you guys know that I have been playing with color and pattern mixing, and it's something I've been having a lot of fun with recently. And I foresee that spring and summer are just gonna further catalyze that. For today's video, I definitely play with more color pairing, and even that's more on the subtle side, because I'm saving a lot of my pattern mixing for my future video on the topic. I digress. Here, I styled a blue and white striped button down over the gingham dress. Both of the colors are in more of a pastel shade, which is what's allowing them to work so nicely together. And you guys know I love my button ups, so maxing out use cases is always something I love doing. An item of clothing I've recently been dating is the jumpsuit. I rented two from Rent the Runway because I like the idea of them, but I haven't wanted to full send into buying one until I knew if it was commitment material or just a fling. Through this rental, I've definitely learned things that I like and things I don't. I like that both of these have visual interest in the fabric. I think I prefer buttons over a zipper for practicality's sake. I found that my bust keeps unzipping the zipper if I keep it at the unzip height I like. So I've had to overzip to compensate and I just, I don't like that. I like the drawstring on the tomato pair because I can adjust the waistline to align with mine versus the denim is structurally very much in place, which does result in some excess fabric. I also found that the torso on both ran long, which makes sense because I have a shorter torso. And finally, sleeve length is also important to me, but that's an easy alteration or double fold kind of fix. I'm still undecided on the full commitment, but I have really enjoyed the ease and fun stylized look of wearing them. So I'm putting a pin in it for now. 
Restyling fall and winter sweaters into the spring is also a good go-to. I think paired with a mini skirt or shorts, which I don't have any with me, they're all in the pod, which we finally have an ETA on, it's coming in two weeks. I am so excited to finally get our stuff. I miss my good cooking pans, my extra pillows, maxi skirts. Anyways, I think this outfit formula is a super easy one to adapt to your closet and replicate. And depending on your spring's weather and what you enjoy wearing, you could also always add tights underneath, maybe knee high boots. And you guys know I love a little pop of something and I think leopard print pairs beautifully with red. So I'm accessorizing with this cute scarf. White jeans for spring are another great go-to. I wanted to style like a coastal grandma pre-summer look. So I'm keeping it super simple with a navy knit sweater and then I'm springifying it with a woven bag. This one is from Ikea's kitchen section. I think it's for produce. That's what I got it for, but it gives the vibe that I'm going for. I'm gonna pop on screen a few other basket bags that I'd happily style in place as well. But um, these, these are all on the pot as well. So more spring things to come. And in the meantime, we're using our imagination. Now, if you like this crisp, more traditional pairing, you can totally jog in place here, but I wanted to spruce it up a touch and give you guys some extra styling ideas. So I grabbed the leopard scarf and loosely knotted it to cascade down the front of the sweater. Because this is such a simple sweater, I think the scarf fills the space nicely and brings some fun and personality to this more classic look. And we've got one more featuring the scarf because I think it's just such a versatile accessory. I mentioned in my last thrift video that leopard and cheetah print are having their every two to three year popularity resurgence. And an accessory like this is a great way to play with the trend and style it without diving fully in. You can totally dive in if you want, go swimming, do a couple laps. But if you're a smidgen interested, you can also dip your toes in via an accessory. Here I've styled it in my hair paired with a gorgeous red cardigan, a denim button up skirt, my favorite pair of shoes and this cassette style bag. The weave on this bag has a yellow undertone, which I think is a nice subtle tie-in with the red and blue, nodding to a triadic primary color pairing. Re-entering the land of button-ups because they really are one of my top, top wardrobe staples, particularly the striped variety. I just love them. Though I am wearing them all year round, I feel like they especially shine in the spring and summer. This is my easy, didn't have to think twice outfit, AKA button-up, sometimes solo, sometimes a tier tank underneath, straight leg jeans, my favorite shoes, and whatever bag fits the vibe and activity of the day. If it's crispy out, I'm bringing along a cardigan or sweater for layering. And in the meantime, it's draped over my shoulders. I think a button up styled with a mini skirt is also really cute. I love a little half tuck. You may have noticed that throughout this video. For me, it's just that perfect in between, literally, of undone casual and styled and proper. I went simple with a pair of Mary Janes and went with a green bag because it seemed fun. Yet another example of loving blue and green together. I also love dressing down a nice pair of trousers with a more casual button-up. I think what makes a button-up have a more casual feel is being more oversized with a less structured and less fitted silhouette and a relaxed collar or cropped hem. Again, I'm doing the half tuck and finishing the outfit with somewhat contrasting final pieces. A structured crossbody and semi beat up white sneakers that honestly need a good scrub down. Adding to my to-do list, I really like how all of these elements balance each other out so nicely. And I think it's created the perfect running around town kind of outfit. Brunch with a friend, DMV, study session at the library, working from coffee shop. This outfit does it all. Now let's talk cardigans. Another wardrobe favorite for spring. Perfect for crispy spring days. Starting with a striped tee and white jeans, I'm adding a cream chunky cardigan and my Black Mary Janes. I decided to do some light pattern mixing by adding my red gingham bag. And I like that the cardigan acts as kind of like a barrier between the two patterns, but still allows for a flow between the two. I do think this outfit could have benefited from something else, whether it be a belt or maybe cuffing the hems or something like that. But because I was filming and trying to go as quickly as possible to make use of the waning light. I didn't spend the necessary time to sit with the outfit. I think that's one of the most underrated but quintessential parts of putting together a look that you love or is really good. The process of iteration and refining through experimentation, which is why it's always nice to really carve out time when you're getting ready, when it's possible, so you have that creative trial and error process. Or alternatively, having a few go-to uniforms that you can rely on when you don't have the time. Like this outfit is a uniform for me. Black tank, 
simple jeans, my favorite shoes, and this camel colored cardigan. Because the outfit's easy, I'll play a little with choosing my bag or accessories, but the outfit itself is a tried and true formula for me. It's not groundbreaking, it's not knock your socks off inventive, but it looks good and I like it. It's akin to a delicious comfort food or a book you enjoy rereading, even though you know the ending. Something I've come to embrace in the last year is that not every outfit has to be iconic. The above and beyond slay, the most unique, inventive look I've come up with. Nor does it have to be an example or a full expression of my styling capability potential or showcase of my wardrobe's depths. You can also just embrace the comfort and simplicity. And then there's also room to innovate upon the simplicity if you like. For example, same outfit, but I'm crisscross tucking the front to create a faux wrap top look. All I've changed is how I tuck the top and now the outfit has a whole new vibe. Reflecting back, I would have added a belt. I think that would have been a nice uniting accessory, but alas, not meant for now. And I'll have something fun to play with next time. But yeah, simplicity is also good. And for our final look, I wanted something that to me felt very spring. Starting with denim jeans and apparently my husband's slippers. Great look. And for my top, this white poof sleeve blouse. This top has the prettiest daisy embroidery and a gorgeous ruffle neckline. A brown braided belt, of course. One of my accessory favorites. And I thought a hair scarf would also be a fun addition. These yellow woven heels are also a fun something as well. And I will say, while I do love these and I think they're gorgeous, I cannot deny the resemblance to Minnie Mouse Mouse's shoes. I'm gonna call it out before anybody else does. Still love them though, and I think when my feet are more tan, the likeness will will fade. Lastly, my go-to spring summer bag. It's a leather and woven crossbody with an adjustable shoulder to crossbody strap. Something I love about this outfit is the subtle quadratic color pairing, primary colors with the featurette of green, blue jeans, yellow shoes, green scarf, with a red being significantly more subtle through the hue of the tan of the bag and belt's leather. I love this look. I think it turned out very spring, very fun, exactly what I wanted. And honestly, it kind of feels like the human incarnation of Marc Jacobs Daisy perfume come to life. I love it. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys got oodles of outfit inspiration and styling ideas. I had a lot of fun with this one. I did something a little bit different. Well, actually I did a lot of things different. I had the multiple cameras. I had the kind of different voiceover. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think of this style. I have some really fun ideas for future videos. I have a cool camera that I've been playing with that I'll be using in an upcoming vlog. It's really, really cool. It's a spring vlog. It's like a welcoming spring into my soul. I know a lot of you guys expressed interest in vlogs, day in my life videos, New York City vlogs. I'm gonna try implementing a weekly vlog here on this channel. We'll see how it goes. I plan to intersperse it with my regular content, but I'm already working on the first vlog. I think it's really cool. I think you guys are gonna like it and that will be going live very soon. So keep your eyes peeled, make sure you're subscribed, have your notifications on so you do not miss a video and you guys can follow on TikTok and Instagram at Jessica Neistat for more. As I mentioned in the beginning, links to everything will be down in the description box. I also have my all-in-one link page that I will put down below in the description box as well, where all the links live to skincare, my closet, my shoes, so you guys can always find things. I will link it below. My camera's dying, the light's going, so I gotta wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sending you guys good vibes always. I hope you have a beautiful spring. Love you so much, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye, guys.